Hello. <laughs> uh, welcome to the uh, Q and A. Here we've got uh, Bab Star and uh, Grace Ellis and Brooke Allen are here from uh, so Batgirl and Lumberjanes and other things. So I don't really know how to uh, kick this off. Um, I guess y'all have all had a really big year. Yeah. So it's like, what were you doing this time last year versus right now? I feel like this is the moment in like the biopic where we flash back and we see like the rest of like the interesting part of the story. <laughs> like, this is the intro. Or, yeah, I feel like I don't know. A year ago, we were like just starting to write stuff for Lumberjanes, and like we we're, I think like a month ago, like 13 months ago from today, we like signed our contracts and stuff. Wow. Um, but I don't know. It's just working my student job. I <laughs> <laughs> was at Trader Joe's. <laughs> um, I was working at a game company in San Francisco. We make like educational iPhone games. So it's super boring. That's <laughs> very important. Very yeah, important educational games. Okay, so how I guess how things changed for you in the last year? Everything. Everything, Everything has changed. Um, I used to do freelance in, in the my free time, so I'd work a full time job and then I'd come home and then I'd. I was doing freelance for Hasbro, or I'd like would draw on my own, and I was like constantly updating things, trying to get like something like Batgirl going, or whatever could sustain me, so I could quit my full time job. Um, but now it's like I just at home drawing comics, and then I come out here and I get to meet all you great people and um, travel a lot more, and um, I have this whole like comics family community now. I got two new best friends right here. <laughs> 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 what? What was that? We're so excited. We're geeking out the whole like time leading up to this. We're like, oh my god, we're gonna be your best friend. I think we did like a lap around the comic book store before like, when we get close, we'd be like, no, it's not done. You guys are famous too. Sorry, we're like a love fest up here. So no, you guys. What was the question? <laughs> uh, just uh, how, how, how different is it now? That's... Oh, um, it's actually not too different. Um, what? I'm still at Trader Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like, I like still keep a day job, but the difference is now people like recognize me and be like, oh my god, Lumberjanes, and then I'm like, I'll tear your ticket, this is where your movie theater is. <laughs> <laughs> up in a way that most people who don't have a lot of credits and things, you know, suddenly it's kind of everywhere. Um, but that's that's kind of a you know, an auspicious debut. And of course, your your was very high profile when yeah. it came out. So I was like, well, here you are on stage uh, uh, for all that. So like, I guess uh, tell me a little bit about what that's been like. What, what expectations versus? Um, I've I've never done a comic before. I got Batgirl. I was. I was I majored in illustration in school, and it was very editorial based, which means like for magazines and newspapers. And comics just seemed like a lot of work for not a lot of pay, so I never pursued it wholeheartedly. <laughs> um, but it's like if DC or Marvel had contacted me, I'd be like, okay, because they could like support me, and I quite went for a pun job to do that when that happened. Sure. So, um, it's been crazy. <laughs> Does that answer? Yeah, I guess I'm just sort of interested in like the process that y'all have that's different because you have like the, oh, the, yes. the biggest company you could be working for, and y'all is obviously a smaller operation. You still have editors and yeah, um, things, so. expectations. I I didn't really. I thought everyone would kind of be really mad at it because it's very different than what they were already doing. And then like the exact opposite happened. Like everyone was like, finally, like something different, and that's kind of what happened. And, I didn't expect it, but the writers claimed that they knew that that was going to happen. But I was like, 
scared to change it because like I feel like DC fans and Batgirl fans like they really get attached to what their character is and who they are and we are doing such a different version of her. Um, I was nervous about it, but it is luckily pretty well received. So it turned out pretty well. Pretty well received. <laughs> <laughs> it's doing okay. <laughs> I mean, um, when when Lumberjanes was like a little baby idea, it was just me and Shannon, um, and it like Shannon Shannon Waters, who was supposed to be on this panel as the flu, and it's like a really gross flu, like one of her eyeballs swelled up, and I'm saying that because it's really gross and really funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, she she's an editor at Boom, um, so like. It's, it was kind of a different process for Lumberjanes than most comics, most comics because we already knew it was happening. Um, we just kind of had to get final approval on everything. Um, so when it was just Shannon and I just like shooting the shit back and forth over Skype, like it just kind of felt like this made up thing. Like it was really abstract. Um, and like someone will probably read this, like whatever. Um, and then it just kind of like exploded slowly. Like as soon as Noelle got on board, we were like, oh, maybe people will read this. And then it was like, oh my god, we're going into a second printing of this issue. And oh, then it was like, I thought oh. Noelle had come up with the idea. No, she, I mean, she came in like kind of early. But, oh, so yeah. you, oh, okay. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Did, did everybody <laughs> know that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> the history of lumberjanes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> So how did how did you get brought in? Uh, when when did you? Uh, you um, got brought in before the pitch got set. Right. So yeah. um, to help out the pitch, like I did the original character designs. Very good. But um, they're really good. And I <laughs> didn't have a computer at the time, so they're just like pencil drawings. They're on, in my house. On the paper. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like, that's really picture there. They're gonna be worth a billion. I know. <laughs> and um, yeah. And then, Send it over to Shannon and and then the rest. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> the only original design that they kept was April, though. Yeah, that's, that's cool. why she has the big manga eyes. Yep. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's how I drew her. They would have all had big manga eyes. That's probably a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> they yes. Yeah, Noah no did it's an amazing awesome. job. So. I'm trying my best to slowly make Batgirl like into a manga. Like, slowly but yes. surely. <laughs> Yeah. The boys are like not even against it. Sorry, I call my writers the boys, so if you hear me say that, that's what I'm talking about. Just boys in general. <laughs> yeah, just the boys. They're cute. Do what I say. <laughs> no, they don't. Sorry, this guy's been a chair that. Brendan Cameron, you're great. I love you very much. <laughs> you're a great team. Um, you're, you're both working on comics that are aimed at. I mean, like, Batgirl's not aimed at children, necessarily, but there's definitely, you know, sort of excuse to a younger demographic. Yeah. Like, at, at my shop, we've had a couple of Girl Scout troops come in because they're working on their... They have a comic artist badge now in Girl Scouts, which is yeah. amazing. Yeah. And, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and it's, uh, it, if you're in seventh grade, you get to go do that. So we've had a couple of different groups of girls 11 to 13 come in. I was showing a bunch of different comics, and they, they do tend... They, they, they all squeal about Sailor Moon. Um, but, yeah. but I was like, you know, we should have the like, oh, yeah. And then they, everybody loves Lumberjanes, especially, you know who loves Lumberjanes the most is the Scout Leaders. They, uh, they've had both, both, you know, the, like the different times they've come in, they've, they've like bought issues and they're like, here you go, girls, y'all, y'all need to read this and everything. They're very excited. Everybody loves Jim. So, yes, Jim's you know, a, a um, late addition. But I guess, so uh, my, my point in, in this is how, how do you approach that? How do you, you think about doing something for, What's obviously sort of a younger audience, but also plenty of adults are reading. Um, well, my writers write a lot of the stories, but um, all of the stories. Uh, but <laughs> it's it's tailored to what I would like to draw. So, like a weird way, I'm like steering the ship a little bit. But I'm like like recently. So we just are finishing our arc, our six issue arc, and then the guys are like writing new ones right now, and they're like, "What do you want to draw, Bad?" So I'm like, "What?" Uh, Okay, and I just started naming fun things, and um, like, what did I, I told them I wanted to do like, like a Scooby-Doo Eyes Wide Shut episode, and then I was like, <laughs> 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 you know, for kids, <laughs> for kids, and then like a, like a Tron episode, and maybe like, like a roller derby episode, and I'm like,
like just I just started spewing out these things that I think I would like be fun to draw in the comic, and they they started pitching me the story back, like incorporating the things that I wanted to do. So that's like pretty pretty cool. So I guess that's kind of what what we approach it. Um, if I'm excited about drawing it, like it's going to translate to the page, and the readers are going to be excited about writing it. And I like cool stuff, so that's kind of how we do it. <laughs> Because, like, Lumberjanes is an all-ages book, and we approach it from, like, a very all-ages point of view. And I think that <coughs> the reason it, like, plays so well to kids is because they are kids, and we don't, we, like, try really hard to not stoop and, like, simplify the story at all. Um, it's just kind of a simple story to begin with. Um, and the reason it plays well for adults is because there are, like, jokes that adults can get. But the trick for the whole thing is, like, you don't want, like, jokes that adults will get that kids will just like see on the page and not understand at all. Um, I, I talked about this in my interview with you so earlier. Tricky. Yeah, um, like in the first issue, there's like this dumb throwaway line about um, where, where Rosie's like, what's the story of Wishbone? Um, which is like, yeah, like a few people think that's funny. <laughs> but like, like, and like I think it's funny and that's why I wrote it. But like, not everyone does, but you know when you see that, that, that that's like, a funny thing to say in general. Um, yeah. So like writing wise, it's that's the hardest line for me to walk. Is like what's funny to everyone, but is especially funny to like five people. <laughs> hmm. um, uh, well, yeah. I mean, I I just I just draw it, but um, I guess I'm like, really great tribute to the panel. <laughs> Tacked on the end. Um, uh, I think I think the only thing that I would struggle with adapting for like an all ages um, book would be like stylistically. I I tend to want to like over render things and and I mean I don't have to worry about like oh like don't draw too this thing too scary like don't draw like a boob in there or something <laughs> that doesn't ever come up in the script so I don't have to worry about it but like um, just like the look of it. Um, trying to find like a, a nice um, sort of simplify the characters but then keep it interesting as well. Um, so I look at like cartoons for that. Just think about it. I think it's a cartoon. We have asked you before too, like like especially issue two is the one that comes to mind <coughs> with the, the monster, the sea monster. We asked you if that was like an okay thing for you to, to draw. We didn't know if that was going to be too scary. For me? Yeah, yeah I didn't <laughs> want to scare myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brooke, are you going to be okay? Do I like, you get a, a script and it's like, oh, this is like, grossing myself out right now. <laughs> it's like yeah. only in comics I feel like that. Cause you yeah. never choose to draw something that would make you feel icky or right. like you don't really love. <laughs> yeah, Habs, what are you what specifically are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know, like, anytime I have to draw a part of the story where it's like sad, like I have to. I feel sad, and I like so like my favorite my favorite things to draw are like when someone gets is getting a hard time to somebody else is giving a hard time to somebody else. So like, I mean sassy. Yeah. <laughs> sassy. Yeah, that's like my favorite bit. So. I mean, I didn't really answer your all age thing. We're we're trying to do like fourteen and up, so if we're sixteen and up, so that's what we aim for. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I know like everybody just different 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 demographics. But I, I mean, I actually was just trying to make fun stuff because yeah. if it's fun for us, it's gonna be fun for everybody else. Yes. I think that's the goal. We just exactly. have to make fun comics. So yeah. If I like it, you're gonna like it. Yeah, <laughs> I have a great chance. Like it. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, I mean, I think that was that was good because I mean, it, it, the answer for right from a writing standpoint is somewhat more you know more obvious like hey no cursing no you know the, the yeah. super adult themes maybe but um but the art is actually it's, it's interesting how you have to do that because it is different and like it's a definitely a departure from what they were doing before and it's, yeah. it stands out it's you know it's cute it's it's cosplayable yeah uh, you know <laughs> things which you know it makes a difference so one time I did get in trouble I put a cartoon wiener on the wall and it was in the back it was a bathroom graffiti yeah. right and those are what what bathroom doesn't have that drawing with it's just like a like the dumbest drawing of like a wiener you could possibly imagine <laughs> and DC was like you can't have that I was like it's so, it's so stupid why who is that going to offend if it's for 16 and up yeah. I'm surprised yeah. Yeah. yeah anyway so 
I changed it to the Dick Grayson symbol. <laughs> 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 so that's in there. It's an issue one. See if you can find it. Which honestly, in that in that world, probably that would also be on bathroom walls. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. So it sucks. Like I have it. <laughs> I have uh, a microphone here. So if anybody has any questions, I can go around and uh, do this because it's not all about me. So does anybody? Uh, oh, good hands. Okay. Let me let me get down there to you and not fall down. Just make the shy people <laughs> talk loud. Yeah. Right. No falling. Okay. Who? I saw you first. Yeah. What's your name then? What's the question? Antonio Hill. Uh, can I just uh, speak? I don't really want to speak into this. Okay, so what if you, are you planning to do comics that are targeted to, uh, you know, adults? Because, you know, because in a way you're somewhat uh, censoring your comics via the artwork or the text. So are you going to do some stuff that's, you know, a bit more darker and thought-provoking that say, is this morally right or wrong? It's not more about entertainment, but more about you know, thought-provoking, and after the person has read it, they'll still be thinking about it. For example, The Cube, uh, by the guy who made the puppets, it was back in 1965, it was this hour-long special back in CBS, but I'm somewhat going off the topic now. <laughs> <laughs> so more, more, more adult type stuff, or is there any plans for... Uh... Yeah, well both of our books kind of already have an established tone, so I don't think we could really no. change it too much at this point, but I know eventually, like, me and my writers maybe want to like work on on an image book like down the line together and that way we could tackle a lot more and there's no like corporate head like being like oh you can't add that or do this or that yeah, or yeah you can like do whatever you want okay, I have another question. Uh, are you going to do some collaborations with people you have not done before for example the author from lighter than air I will be work. I don't know if I'll work with that person. Look, look, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. I, I have no idea who you have, who you guys are. I have not read any of your comic books. <laughs> I'm just wondering, are you going to be collaborating with other people? Uh, you know, that you have trying new things. Just wondering, are you going to be collaborating with people who you have not collaborated before with in the distant or near future? I hope. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna look otherwise, at you. that's the end of my career. Probably. <laughs> I, I've read your books. I'm gonna look into the future and say, yeah, it seems likely. So yeah. it's yeah. good. So you should read their stuff. It's good. Okay, I'll go over here. Fat girls are available at my table. <laughs> Anybody needs good. ketchup? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Layla, and I'm wondering which person is most like Ripley, because that's my favorite character. Oh. <laughs> Babs. What? <laughs> 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 I don't know who that is, so I'm going to look at that. Wow, Lumberjanes are available at our table. <laughs> Like it's not a boy band, you know, where it's like here's the cute one and you know, here's this sort of the, smart the one. edgy one. And, yeah. yeah <laughs> actually, yeah. actually, like early in the process, they talked to us and they were like, we should. They need types. We need like a sporty spice in there <laughs> and like all this. And we were like, no. <laughs> I don't know if you've actually read this comic, but I don't think we can do that. <laughs> but they, but they have really specific. Yeah, for trades, and that's something that people are going to relate to. Yeah, I mean, they're like, because it's not so general. We're trying to make them like people. Like, they're all like really vaguely based, like, like a pinch based on people that I actually know, you know? And like, 
I think that's what makes it work. It's not like we tried to have like a ginger spice. You definitely won't find like pot in there anywhere, you know? Sure. Okay. Uh, else? Uh, you're right here. Yeah. So you talked about the uh, the wall willy that you couldn't draw. Yeah. Uh, but you, but with your artwork, you put a lot of details in the background. Can you tell us about some of the little Easter eggs that you oh, put yeah. in the issues of Batgirl? So. When I first got the job, I was like, I was like, I'm gonna sneak in so much stuff because I didn't understand why nobody does it. <laughs> or like anyone at DC, I guess I should say. But yeah, I think I put off the record, I put like a Sailor Moon in every single issue. So yes. look for that. <laughs> and then we try to color her different, you know, so we don't get 100% in trouble. But I sneak in a Sailor Moon, and then in a lot of crowds, I'll put friends like. Kate Leth is in it, in the gallery scene, and then I put Marceline, Duo Maxwell, Sailor Moon, uh, who else, Janelle Monet, like anyone that I like, kind of love at the moment, is like, Betty is in almost a lot of crowd scenes, she's yeah. like my go-to, like, Burnside hipster, ideal Burnside hipster, so she's in it a lot, I put her and Jordan in the next one, and it's like, it's like a concert scene, and then we have these like robots taking pictures and like putting it on like a screen in the in like the on the stage. And I put I put Betty and Jordan like as the one. That's Betty Felon. She draws this. She has this blog that's called um, like com comic strip. Something. Oh. Fa yes, fashion tips for comic strips, and it's really cute. So if you like cute fashiony things that also have anything to do with comics, like you should follow her blog. And she's adorable. She's like. She's like this cute Asian girl. She has these big bows that she wears in her hair all the time, and like a leather jacket, and like Peter Pan collar style. It's cute. She's I add her all the time. Well, Chris Anka I put in there a lot. Uh, just my friends. Like it's just easier to put in like people I know. And I went to art school, so I have like all these like hipster people like just pull from and put in the front side. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, if you catch anything, you can always tweet at me and I'll like confirm if it's like, if that, that is like an Easter egg or not. I think that's a lot of fun. Yeah, I think we spotted the Valkyrie flying bee Oh symbol. yeah, uh, uh, she's a, it's, a, it's a framed in that girl's apartment with Frankie above the record player in between the two windows is the Valkyrie sign, so. That's right. <laughs> Some of y'all who might not know the, the Valkyries, uh, which I'm a member of, so that's why I knew about it, um, uh, are a uh, organization for women who work in comic shops and, and retail. That uh, Kate Leth, who I'm sure is at her table right now, uh, founded. So a bunch you of guys in here are in there. Yeah. Um, yeah, like maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Tweet at me. Um, <laughs> I think one time you know. One time, I mean, like, I draw really sloppily, but one time I, I drew, um, like, just, like, in the background, like, some little, like, way off in the distance, like, little big foots, and Marta just colored over them green. No! <laughs> um, like, they're, they're, like, really tiny. So she was like, oh, the rock. Color it <laughs> Color green. And I was like, no, it's a big foot. <laughs> um, yeah, I put my friends in, like, a couple of the group scenes. I think there's um there's a lot of Jurassic Park references. <laughs> the ones that are actually like written the, in. The textual ones, yeah, like the ones you added. Yeah. yeah. Also, I think there's one, so there's this one that's coming up in 13, because I'm not on the issues 9 to 12, so like the one I'm back on is 13, and uh, there's like a, a particular part where there's like all of these kids going to their respective camps. Um, like band camp or what, whatever, I don't know, like equestrian camp or something. And then one, like they just didn't, <laughs> y'all didn't, didn't specify. So like I, I just drew like a little baby Alan Grant. Um, and he's got his like, he's, instead of like the, um, his seatbelt, he has them like tied. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah, it's Easter egg. <laughs> I thought it was great, bro. Okay, and here. Hi. So, um, I know when like the first designs of the new Batgirl came out, there was like a major like increase in sales for yellow Doc Martens. Oh yeah. Which I thought was incredible. Them <laughs> and they like sold out in a day. Like, ridiculous. <laughs> um, and I was wondering for like the Lumberjanes girls, like, have you guys seen an increase in like 
shaved side hair and flannel and like... <laughs> I can't get shaved sad hair anymore. It's so it's sold out. Sad. <laughs> no, I think, I mean, just earlier today, somebody was talking to us about how, like, they're really grateful that they have something to cosplay now because they have the sides of their head shaved, which is great. And I think that, like, it happens kind of frequently. Like, someone will be cosplaying and they'll come up to the table and talk to us. And we just like have this silent conversation. It's like, are they cosplaying or are they just dressed like that? <laughs> <laughs> or like, they're like your attire. It's yeah. And they're like, you just like, I like your out. <laughs> 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 it would be terrible if we were like, that's an awesome Mal cosplay. And they're like, I haven't read the comic yet and I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Which can happen. Yeah, just possible. So, um, kind of related to Easter eggs, I really liked the kind of uh, anagrams and symbolic things in Lumberjane. So I was wondering, how, how do you come up with those, and were there any sort of uh, hidden jokes or Easter eggs in the symbology or the, the hidden in the anagrams? Uh, well, the anagrams were mostly X-Files jokes, <laughs> um, pretty much exclusively. There was... <laughs> I don't, I don't need you. Sadly, <laughs> Judge. No, I love you. Sorry. Um, there was one, there was a typo in one of them. Sorry. No, no, no. I, it's, no, it's okay. We should have, we should have caught it. Um, oh, so I drew it right. No, no, you drew it wrong. But we should have, we should have told you that you drew it wrong earlier. Um, no, I'm a little bit dyslexic, but so I was like, draw these letters, and like, oh, this is really difficult for me. Wouldn't have done that if we had drawn. But there was one that was like probably would have like opened the door to a lot of questions if like two of the letters had been correct, but they weren't. <laughs> Shut so that door and slammed of, it. It became nothing. Um, what was it? <laughs> Answer it now. Um, should you, should we? I don't know. It was just kidding. I don't know. It was. It was. Really, I don't have no it, idea. No, it anagrammed to Rosie knows everything. Uh -oh. um, which is like well, actually not a spoiler. Everything. It's not a spoiler at this point. Like if you're caught up, you you kind of like know that. But like, yeah. I mean. They're, but they were mostly x jokes. They don't. They, most of them didn't mean anything. <laughs> One of them was so cool. The truth is One, out there. The truth is out there. Yeah. Make sure you drink your Ovaltine was one of them. <laughs> 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 we're really frustrated. Sounds <laughs> <was> like writers. <laughs> okay, I, know, I think I missed somebody here. So many people. Okay. I was gonna ask. Uh, is Brooks and Babs? Do y'all work digitally or uh, traditionally? Usually, or have you Digital. always done that? I can do either, but digital is just faster. It makes more sense. It's less of a headache. I do both. Um, all of those are good points. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't sell like the original art. Yeah, it's like so. another thing of income. Yeah. So sometimes I'll do like an issue. I haven't done very many of the issues traditional. I think we only did two of them. But um, the next, like, I'm gonna try to just like alternate it. Um, we'll see what happens. Like, if you can figure out which pages would sell, you could like switch and just do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a good one, and then do that one traditional. And that's true. Wrong. Yeah, if there's going to be one that's like, Smart. nothing's happening on the page. Yeah. Like, we'll make sure that there are no pages like that. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, yeah. Grace and Noelle write like, a page of just forest. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've got a comment and a question. Uh, Grace, you were talking about the jokes that are like for like five people, very specific. Yeah. I think in issue, it was issue seven, I caught the League of Their Own reference. Yes! <laughs> Thank you. I laughed so hard, it was so great. Noel, <laughs> Noel wanted to take that out because she didn't get it, and I was like, no, I really need you to watch this movie. We sat down with her and made her watch it. Is it Space No Crying Baseball? No, it's Lay Off the High One. Yes. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> But the question was, um, for all y'all, if uh, y'all could get your hands on any like intellectual property, like your dream intellectual property from like 
Taylor Booth. <laughs> 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 whoa, whoa, how would y'all tackle that for comics? <laughs> Any intellectual property and make it a comic? Yeah. Oh, like movies, video games. Mine are all terrible, and I'm pretty sure like they're probably not hard to get. <laughs> and then I'm also equally sure that no one would read them. Yeah, just everything I liked as a kid: Beast Wars, Street Sharks, Fight Club. Yeah, Street Sharks. I want all those. Street Sharks is a comic book. Pretty cool. Jawsome. I think I I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about this a little bit because I, we got turned down. But I we were working on. Uh, does anybody watch Carmilla the web series? Yeah. We we were working on that and like like had it all laid out and then they just didn't have the money to do it. So I think if I lived in a dream world, that's the one I would do because it'd be so fun, you know. Because like if if you're not familiar with it, the whole um, web series takes place in just their dorm room and they're always talking about things like happening. And the reason they do that is because they don't have any money to like film those things happening. Yeah. But if you have a comic book, you can do whatever you want, you know. <laughs> so like I want to do that. I want to live in that world. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my favorite movie, one of my favorite movies is Empire Records. I don't know if everyone's seen it. But I think that would be a fun comic, like just watching those characters, okay. like their day to day in the record store. I think would be fun. Yeah. Thanks for uh, Grace. Uh, whoever, uh, who is behind all the amazingly punny badges? Like, absolutely just makes the heart grow fond. And oh, it's totally just a team effort. Is it? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it started. It started out just like as a tiny joke. I was just like, I really want a pungent master badge, and then it just evolved into like this like massive list that it's just like this Google Doc that just like never stops. <laughs> and how do you feel about uh, X Files potentially returning? Mixed feelings. Yeah, okay. We'll talk about it after the panel. If you want. <laughs> Hi, um, I have a question about like with Batgirl and the wonderful response that the costume has gotten. Do you feel that there's a direction? Going like that, the that the mainstream comics are going in that direction more, or are you worried that because it's aimed at theoretically a younger audience, or it's like this is the girls' book? Do you feel are you worried about being like tokenized and put in this, or do you think the industry is actually taking this example and running with it and being like, let's do more of this? They definitely are taking it and running with it. Like I don't know if anyone heard, like heard of so DC's doing this thing called Convergence, and then afterward they're they're launching like. 24 new books, and then they're keeping 24 of the books. And the new launch, the new launch books are like, literally, I think Bleeding Cool wrote an article, and they were like the Batgirling of DC Comics, where they were like saying that our direction has inspired them to like take more chances and do more like, um, like less of the same stuff that they've been doing, I should say, I guess. They, it's usually like gritty and dark and like very traditional comics, but now they're like taking more of a chance, so. I think they saw what happened with Batgirl and they're running with it. And like costume wise, like all we did was like like the costume's still sexy, it's just not sexualized. You know, there's like a big difference. And like since I'm the artist, like I, I like to draw sexy girls. Like I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but I try to make, you know, it's like what we wanna see and feel like as like being sexy ladies instead of like what a dude like Drawing like a gratuitous butt shot and like crotch shots like in the air and then like bending really weird like I don't do that so I think that direction is really good too yeah like why didn't you just like do the Power Girl thing where she was so excited because like women in comics yeah I was like we had I had a couple like mom and daughters yeah like take take everything. Mom. If you want mom. commissions done and people are being resistant, get a tiny human to just just do puppy dogs uh, as the artist, and they'll break down. <laughs> That's true. I liked the little Gravity Fall Easter egg, the Gravity Fall theme song. Um, did you kind of base it off Gravity Falls? No. Um, and I, I'm only like quick to answer that because they were like kind of happening at the same time and we get that a lot. Um, but they were totally separate. Um, and I, I mean like honestly they're not that similar. Like, 
Uh, it's I'll like watch. woods. Okay, well, <laughs> it's it's like woods and monsters, and like the tone is kind of like spunky, I guess. But like, I don't know. I think the the writing like styles are pretty different. Um, but I don't know. I like the Gravity Falls theme song. I wish we had theme song. Oh, you're, you're such a good theme song. It's such a good cartoon. It is. We should hire us. Speaking of your uh, the mixtape, who who does this? Who's who's responsible for putting this together? Is I do. I put them together. That's awesome. They're great. We have uh, on drive up here last night. We're listening to it on uh, Spotify. Uh -huh. It was it was really great music. Is there so. one for each issue? Good job. There was one for the first seven. That's cool. <laughs> you, you you have to do them in all. Get back to work. <laughs> Did I see? Oh, he's got one. So anyway, what is your somewhat of an origin story? How did you all meet each other and start out? And also, where's your group? I don't know where it is exactly. Well, for the first part of that answer, it was very much like Avengers. Like, <laughs> Shannon. What? Shannon is like. <laughs> well, Please tell me. You don't know about this. Like, you like, you serious? Yeah. You might not know about this, Babs, because you're DC and like, oh, but. <laughs> <laughs> so I can see what's going on from my ivory tower. <laughs> Shannon was like, you know, um, Nick Fury, and then she was like, you know, I've got, I've got this thing I'm working on, it's called Lumberjanes. And she brought in Grace, who's Thor, clearly. Oh. And <laughs> that surfer book, right? Yeah. She's the Thor. She huh. loves her hammer. Anyway, <laughs> and then, what? Noelle, I don't, she's like Tony Stark, I think. Oh, yeah, she flew sure. in, and she's like, we've got all these character designs. And then, um, and then I'm like Bruce Banner. And then Whitney, my editor, is the Hulk, so. <laughs> that's pretty true. Yeah. yeah. And, then, uh, and then that's how that happened. That's like actually an astonishingly good, like, that's how it happened. And then, and then wow. our booth is at the end of the, it's in that other room, <laughs> and it's at the back. Way back. The way, way back. Did you guys pitch it to Bill, and then this what happened? Well, there was, how did you get a foot in the door? I'm just curious. There was, Shannon, um, yeah. Nick Fury. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was, she, she, yeah, yeah there, okay. there was an, oppor an opportunity arose at Boom for a new book. Um, they're actually looking for a book, something they could do a book and, like, a t an animated show for it. Um, so whatever we pitched, like, we had to keep in mind that there were probably going to be two things, or ideally there would be two things. Obviously, like, the animated part is, like, taking a lot longer, or might not happen at all. Who even knows at this point? But, um, so there was an opportunity there, and Shannon, like, was already working there, so she was like, we should do this. And, like, we were friends. Like, you she, knew Shannon. I knew Shannon, because okay. um, I, I also... I, Basically. Well, <laughs> well, I like, no, 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 no. Well, listen, I, I, I am a contributor at this website called Auto, Auto Straddle, um, where oh, I was like yeah, a writer yeah. and like I had gone to school for script writing and all this stuff. Um, so she like liked my writing. That's why. Okay. Listen. <laughs> yeah, that's how did you get it? <laughs> they liked my drawing. Okay. Yeah. I like your drawing. Thanks. Too. I would have hired you. Yeah. <laughs> No, that, that, I mean, that's, that's like, how that part of it happened, is cool. that, like, Shannon already worked there and, like, seized the opportunity for you guys are already and, 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 No, no Whitney's my aunt, so. Oh. I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's a joke. We did go to school together, though. No, I, as, soon as, as soon as we started working on it, Shannon was like, I have an artist that I know who will be perfect for this, and it was Brooke. And we tried out a couple other people, and they just didn't get it. And that's the truth. Aww. <laughs> Um, so, I, I guess my question comes from, there are some, but obviously a much smaller um, number of comics that are geared towards women and girls for reading. Uh, did that play into the factor uh, with you guys, with like, there aren't enough truly women-centric comics that really need to be out there, because like, there's a lot of weird guy spin-off comics that happen or whatever that aren't necessarily just the superheroes. But as far as women comics, I feel like there weren't a lot, and I feel like that's changing, and that's good and exciting. <laughs> Thank you for your statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, did that play into your, your 
decision to make um, them? Cameron, Cameron Stewart and Brendan Fletcher had the idea for Batgirl and, and making it the way it was, and I think they just wanted to make a fun comic and not necessarily like a, a comic for girls. I think there's like a little bit of a difference. But yeah, there there aren't enough, and it's good that ours appeals. But we, I just I think we just wanted like a different kind of comic than that what was out there, because we have a lot of guy readers still, um, that that love the book, and we're just trying to make some bet and uh, <laughs> and yeah, we're just trying to make like a fun fun comic everybody can enjoy. So. Yeah, I mean I think Lumberjanes is similar, but maybe not the same, because I think like partway through the process, it occurred to us like, oh, this is going to be like an all-woman comic, and we should probably, like, we can we can lean into this, because, like, I don't know, I'm pretty gay, Shannon's pretty gay, and we're like, we're just not going to put men in this at all. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and that's, that's how they ended up at a scout camp, because we were like, what if, where is a place where, like, teenage girls hang out where there are no boys? Camp. Um, so that's, like, I mean, at, at some point in the creation process, it was, like, we are going to do this, it is going to be an all-woman team, it was, like, very intentional, like that's kind of where you get like the the like famous woman explicitives from is from like me being kind of an asshole and being like we're gonna teach feminism while we're doing this. <laughs> um, so like there. Yeah. So like I, like it, the the goal of the comic isn't to be like like women. The comic. The goal. Of the comic. <laughs> messages in it like it's not like just like we're doing whatever we want there's there are like themes and things we're trying to say with this comic but the there there was a point there where we made the intentional decision to like make it about women because no one else is really doing this yeah yeah i i, I like all the references to because even if i don't know who i can tell there's a bit of reference being made to somebody i see you there and so i uh then i google uh, it's yeah. nice to have google so yeah, there's so many that I, that I'm learning about. <laughs> I, I encourage everyone to Google things you don't understand. So that information exists. Yeah. 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 It's just a matter of you're gonna meet deadlines if like you're if you realize like oh well I'll just like I'll get fired. <laughs> I don't. So that really sets a fire under your butt and um, it's my all ages <laughs> under your butt. And, and there's plenty of times where like I definitely don't want to draw, but um, I think setting aside time like a designated time to just chill out and, like go out with your friends and stuff, and then a work time, um, a little bit of structure there, that goes a long way too, um, versus when you're in school and stuff, you can kind of be like, yeah, I just want to like, I'm just going to draw for like an hour, and then hang out with my friends, and then draw for an hour, or whatever, um, yeah, that's how I handle it, and coffee, a lot coffee, of coffee. yeah, a lot of coffee, um, the, the background schedule's on, I get, I get five weeks to do 20 pages, <sighs> And I do about a page a day, or I I goof off for two weeks, and then I work really like a dog for like three weeks, <laughs> which is usually what happens. Um, and I, recently, I had a friend come in town, and I learned that I could do two pages a day if I really wanted to. <laughs> so it just depends on like how on the ball I am at the time. But we get we get like a good amount of time, then it's just how smart we like spend it. I guess is the right way to put it. But yeah, that girl's on five weeks for 20 pages. Sounds like a really good initiative. You, you, you did extra because you wore a costume. <laughs> um, so I actually, when I bought some of the comic books, I found them at Austin Books and Comics, and I brought them in class, and I showed them to a lot of my friends. And a lot of my friends are guys, and a lot of them are like stealing comics, the lumberjanes from each other now, and reading them. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I wanted to ask, where did you get the idea for like 
the Greek gods and goddesses. And I also like the part where Zeus comes and he's like, let's go get ice cream because I'm a cool dad. <laughs> <laughs> what is this book? <laughs> that now that we have an ongoing, we can paint it instead of just being like, and now there's Greek stuff at the end, and I hope you like our comments. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it, has a, it has a lot, I, I don't think I'm really spoiling too much by saying this, it has a lot to do with like the campsite itself, like the location. Um, yeah. I don't know. Spoilers. Yeah. Lost the time. It's probably like it's the smallest question ever, but... <laughs> Uh, do you actually have a name for your Lumberjanes fans? Because like other fandom stuff, they have like names. Yes, like that. And um, like, I don't know what to call myself, like at all. <laughs> I, also, I don't know what to call my teacher now and like a bajillion of my friends. Like, cause I can't just call my friends anymore. Like I have to call them something different, right? Whoa. Um. <laughs> something is that somebody else is putting out. Oh, man. Well, like, the unfortunate thing is that, like, I have a stack of comics that's literally as tall as I am that I haven't had a chance to read, but, um, um, no. I like everything from, um, No Brow Press, like, everything they're putting out is amazing. Yes. That's incredible. Um, and then, I don't, is it Piao? Piao? P-E-O? W Q <laughs> Studios. They're like this really small. Um, I think they're maybe located in like Sweden. Um, but uh, I think Hannah K did a book with them, and it's incredible. Um, all their stuff is risograph, and it's just gorgeous. Um, and the, the stories are amazing too. So you should check out that. I spelled it out for you. Maybe wrong. Maybe I hate that song, but that's what I'm plugging. Yeah. I mean, the stuff that I read is pretty, like, stuff you would expect me to read. Sex Criminals, um, Bitch Planet, all that image stuff. That's really great and everyone loves. Um, oh, yeah, Alex and Ada. Is really yeah, good. yeah. Sure. Um, I'm going to plug Team Dog. Yeah. And I know that we, like, dogs. Yeah. So I, I know that we, like, are supposed to because they're also in our imprint, but like, guys, it's so good. <laughs> so you should read Teen Dog because it's like just ridiculous. It's so pretty too. I don't know. The critique 
entertaining is it? Yeah. yeah. Capture great. creatures, be in puppy cat. Um, yes. Help us great warrior. Help us great warrior. <laughs> I'll also go back and read Midas Flesh. That was yes. great too. Oh, Squirrel Girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, That's a marble time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, Just kidding. I went to a Marriott for that, too, so oh, I'm not cheesy. Um, <laughs> uh, I guess I, I got, I'm, not, I'm getting into comics now that I'm in the industry, so Cameron Stewart, like, has been recommending me a bunch of cool ones. Uh, ones I can remember are Deadly Class, which I really like, and... Um, saga, which everybody reads anyway, so it's not like a, a, an indie one or whatever, but um, uh, one of my favorite mangas, like before I got into comics, I really like Tramps Like Us, I don't know if anyone's ever read that one, that's like my favorite comic of all time, and um, Peach Girl is really cute, and, yeah, uh, I like manga too, <laughs> I'm gonna pitch those. You should go back and read Blue Monday. Uh, I have it scared. <laughs> Well, I think that's our time, so these are all great questions, and thanks so much for working